What would you have seen if you would have wandered through the city of Rome in 476 AD? We always hear that 476 AD is the date where the Western Roman Empire ended. On that date, the last Western Roman Emperor, Romulus Augustus, was forced by the Germanic general Odoacer to abdicate and retire, thus ending the reign of Roman emperors in the West. However, this is also contested, since Romulus Augustus was not recognized by the Eastern Roman Emperor Zeno as lawful emperor. In fact, Julius Nepos was the lawful Roman Emperor and he reigned in Dalmatia until 480 AD, when he was assassinated, quite possibly by Odoacer. Dalmatia was de facto until 480 AD still a remnant of the Western Roman Empire. And even so, the very last remnant of the Western Roman Empire was actually the kingdom of Soissons. Aegidius, a Roman general, had broken off from the Western Roman Empire after the treachery of Ricimer against Majorian, about which we talked in the last video. He declared open hostility against Ricimer because, quite understandably, he didn't want to follow that evil bastard. And with this secession, a quite large part of northern Gaul went with him. The last remnant of Roman-controlled Gaul thus split off from the Western Roman Empire and was henceforward known as the Kingdom of Soissons. Zyagrius, the son of Aegidius, ruled this last Roman exclave until it was de facto ended in 486 AD with the Battle of Soissons where the last Romans lost against the Franks. With Suagrius, who called himself Rex Romanorum, King of the Romans, ended the last remnant of the Western Roman Empire. So we see that the date of 476 AD is only one of the possible dates of the fall of the Western Roman Empire. But all these events took place far away from Rome. Romulus Augustus reigned in Ravenna when he was deposed, Julius Nepos in Dalmatia, and Suagrius in northern Gaul. But what happened in Rome during that time, and what was the state of the city of Rome itself? Well, it turns out that all these dates, 476 AD, 480 AD, and 486 AD, didn't play a large role in the regular, everyday lives of Roman citizens in the city of Rome. By 476 AD, Rome had suffered some pretty brutal events. Rome had not been sacked by any enemy force in 800 years since the sack of Rome by the Gauls under Brennus in 390 BC. In 409 AD, the city of Rome although already in decline since the capital had been moved to Constantinople by Constantine some 90 years earlier, was still perfectly intact. All the great monuments that had accumulated during the 1162 years since the founding of the city in 753 BC were perfectly intact fully adorned with splendorous displays of Roman wealth and might. All the temples and statues were in fact absolutely unspoiled and intact even in the year 409 AD. In the Notitia Dignitatum, a Roman document dated around 420 AD, we can read that even during that time Rome still counted 46,602 insulae, or apartment buildings, and an incredible 1,797 palaces or temples. The population surely had declined since Constantine had decided to build his new capital on the site of the city of Byzantium, but according to different sources, it must have still measured 300,000 to 400,000 inhabitants. But then the first disaster struck with the sack of Rome in AD 410 by the Visigoths under Alaric. The city was plundered for three days 
and this was a great shock for all contemporary witnesses. However, the Visigoths in fact did not destroy buildings or the fabric of Rome itself. They plundered gold and other valuables, but it appears that the buildings themselves remained absolutely intact. Only the gardens of Sallust seem to have been damaged by fire, however all other buildings seem to have remained unimpressed by this sack. Even Olympiodorus the Elder describes Rome after the sack as splendorous in appearance with its giant temples and baths and amphitheaters. The damage inflicted by the Visigoths must thus have been limited in its effect on the fabric of the city itself. But the next disaster struck in 455 AD when the Vandals sacked the city, but this time they sacked it for two weeks, a lot longer and more thorough than the Visigoths. The Vandals plundered with such shamelessness that the word Vandal became synonymous with actions involving deliberate destruction of or damage to public or private property. They stripped the temple of Jupiter on Capitoline Hill of its statues and even tore down most of the roof because the roof tiles were gold plated. But the temples during that times had already been closed for decades and in disuse, thus the temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus remained without roof and statues from that time onwards. The Vandals also robbed many statues from the great baths of Caracalla, Diocletian and Constantine and from the imperial palace on the Palatine Hill. Had the city still had some wealth left before the Vandals, after the Vandals the city had been utterly impoverished. All that was valuable had been carried off by the Vandals to their kingdom in North Africa together with lots of prisoners of high rank. After this sack, Rome was an impoverished city. However, even then, the fabric of the city remained intact and the damage to the buildings themselves was in fact quite limited. But the damage to the population and the pride of Rome was incalculable, so that Rome really then began its steep decline. After that traumatic event, Rome must still have counted some 200,000 citizens, even though still a large city for that time, it was only a far cry from its peak population of 1 million during the times of Trajan or Marcus Aurelius. The people, utterly impoverished, now began the practice of demolishing buildings in order to erect new ones. It is the cruel irony of history that the largest damage to the city itself came from its own inhabitants and not from the barbarians. In order to protect the buildings of Rome, Emperor Majorian issued a decree in order to protect all public buildings of Rome from destruction by its own citizens, with the threat of severe penalty. This law indeed showed effect and the public buildings and temples of Rome remained protected for some more years. Then in 472 AD, the city was sacked a third time, with Rikimer, about whom we talked in the first video, sacking the city. A barbarian general, Magister Militum of the Western Roman Empire, sacking the capital city itself. Another cruel irony of history. This third sack of Rome in the 5th century is the least well documented and it must have been quite limited in its severity. No known damage was inflicted upon the city itself, most of the damage and harm had been inflicted upon the population of Rome, that was after being besieged for months by Ricimer, starving and ravaged by the plague. Thus, after this sack of Rome, the city must have appeared similar to how it appeared after the sack of 455 by the Vandals. So then in 476 or 480 AD, when the last Roman emperors of the West ended, the city of Rome itself 
probably appeared pretty much intact with regards to its outward appearance. Had you stood on a hill outside of the city gates, outside of the Aurelian walls of Rome, you would not have seen a big difference in 476 than in 400 or 409 before the sackings. The outward appearance of the city was completely intact. However, would you have walked through the Forum Romanum in 476 AD, you would have witnessed a different picture altogether than in 400 AD. While the buildings would still be intact and impressive, all temples of the Roman Forum still standing, you would have noticed the incredible difference of the population itself. Rome's population after 476 AD must have fallen as low as 150,000. So you would have seen a lot less people in 476 than before the sack of 410. Also, the people themselves would look utterly impoverished compared to before the sackings. And if you are interested in such topics, please subscribe to this channel as it would greatly motivate me to continue making a lot of videos. Gratias agutibi amici. In AD 400, you still would have seen many illustrious senators or rich aristocrats accompanied by many slaves roaming the forum. You would have seen many shops and lively trade. But in 476 AD, you would have seen mostly beggars, impoverished plebs and only a few remaining senators and probably no rich aristocrats. They had all fled to Constantinople shortly before the sacks of 410 and 455. Gone were the rich displays of trade, the merchants showing off their valuable goods from faraway lands. If shops did remain, they must have appeared as mere shadows of their former glory. The Temple of Jupiter would not have had a roof and if you would have visited the baths in 476, many statues would have been missing and the golden adornments were also missing in many places. The abdication of Romulus Augustus itself had absolutely no impact on the city of Rome. It must have been a day like every other day when Odoacer forced Romulus Augustus to abdicate on September 4th, 476. Nothing at all changed in the city of Rome itself on that day, since that event took place far away in Ravenna. The impact on Rome was not felt except for maybe a few senators in the Curia. They maybe were aware of the momentous impact this event would have on the future of Rome, but the common citizen of Rome would not have heeded this event in the slightest. If you would have walked through the streets of Rome on this September 4th, 476, the city would have appeared exactly as it did one year or two years earlier. Even a few years later, in 480, the city would have appeared the same. The event of 476 does not hold any significance whatsoever for the city of Rome itself. If you would have visited the Colosseum, or more correctly, the Amphitheatrum Flavium, you would have seen it empty and abandoned. The last gladiatorial games here took place in 403, 73 years earlier. If you would have visited the Baths of Caracalla or of Diocletian and of Constantine, the Baths themselves would have been in perfect working order. In 476, you would have still been able to enjoy the baths as you would have been 80 years earlier. Although the baths would have appeared not quite as splendorous, since as we said, they had been plundered and many statues had been carried off by the barbarians. If you would have gone to the Circus Maximus, you would have still witnessed chariot races. In fact, even decades later, until the 530s, Chariot races were carried out in the Circus Maximus. If you would have climbed up the stairs to the old palace of the Caesars, the palace itself 
would have seemed absolutely intact from the outside. Only the inside would tell a different story. And most impressive adornments had been stolen in the three sackings of the 5th century. If you would have visited the other monuments of Rome, they would all have appeared absolutely intact from the outside, albeit probably their ornaments and colorations must have already been diminished compared to 80 years earlier. But the real difference would always be quite visible on the inside of the buildings. That is where the sackings had inflicted the most damage, and had all the palaces temples and baths appeared absolutely majestic in the year 400, they would have appeared barren, empty and exposed on the inside in the year 476 AD. The population during that time was so utterly diminished with its 150,000 inhabitants that they all could have fitted into the Circus Maximus. But even so, from afar, standing on a faraway hill, the city itself appeared as majestic and grandiose as it did 80 years earlier. Thus, 476 AD does not hold any significance for the city of Rome itself. The real disasters occurred in 410, 455 and 472 and Rome should never regain its former splendor. However, Rome still remained Roman. The Senate still continued and all institutions were still intact. We shall see in fact that under the kingdom of Theodoric, Rome experienced somewhat of a flourishing period with many monuments even being repaired and restored as late as 537 AD. The real death of the city of Rome and the utter destruction of everything that was left of the old Roman society and aristocracy, the old Roman institutions and structures, began in the Gothic Wars of the mid-6th century. That was the real death of the city of Rome itself and we shall talk about that in detail in another video. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope I could show you that the date of 476 AD did not hold any meaning for the city of Rome itself and that it would not have mattered if you would have walked through Rome in 476 AD or 520 AD. The picture of the city would have been virtually identical. With this I say farewell my friends, benevale amici and until the next time.